For greater depth in these lessons, in this lesson series, you need Thomas Budmore's book, Hearing the Voice of God. These lessons was taken from this book. Hearing the Voice of God is available on Amazon.com at Thomas Budmore's author page. The address at, is at the end of each lesson. This is the back cover of the book. It shows the order of which these lessons are laid out and also how the book is laid out. At the bottom of this page is the Amazon author page address for this book and Thomas Budmore's books. Hearing the Voice of God series. Lesson 10A, Part 2, Hearing the Voice of God, The Condition of the Heart, Bitterness. By Thomas Bud Moore, Cross Walker. Website and email at the end of the video, along with the books by Thomas Bud Moore, Cross Walker, at the end of the video. Hearing the voice of God. Lesson 10a, part 2. Hearing the voice of God. The condition of the heart. Bitterness. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. He, God, said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised it at my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. Hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit is not a mental exercise. The mind that is renewed to the contaminated word of God would not allow the believer's spirit or the Holy Spirit to speak or have any control over the believer other than that which conforms to the parameters of the contaminated word of God. Parameters. Parameters describe the dimension of which something may operate or the description of an object. Open box is a parameter of this object. Q is a parameter of this object. Some only want to hear the voice of God to verify that God is real. Why does God need to reveal himself that way? When it is by faith that a person accepts the reality of the one true God, Yahweh. Once the acceptance of the reality of God is by faith, it is easy for a person to come to know the voice of the one true God and the Holy Spirit. First is the written word of God. The first way God Almighty speaks to all humans is through his written word. There are many translations of the word of God. These are man's attempts to translate the original Hebrew writings and the Greek writings. Scripture reading. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 13 through 16. Colossians chapter 1, 25 and 26. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Second, the small still voice. And the small still voice, the gentle whisper, is the conscience of man. This is where God puts his laws and the primary place where the Holy Spirit speaks to all humans. This is the voice the believer must come to know. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, 25 through 27, verse. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. It 
anything contrary to the word of God or explains it away or nullifies or cancels the word of God or the works of God, even if it looks good or sounds good, it is false. If it is not in line with scripture and is not in context with the rest of the scriptures, such as paragraph, chapter, book, or the whole of the scriptures, it is a false doctrine or a false teaching. The word of God that is used out of context in any way is not truth. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. Please read in this order. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks through the gifts of the Holy Spirit to encourage, comfort, and exhort a believer, a church. The fivefold ministries. God uses the fivefold ministries to confirm what he is dealing with the believer about. There are times when God speaks through the fivefold ministry to initiate or to guide a believer into his will, but but it is not God's common practice. Five dreams and visions. God speaks to the believer or a person through dreams and visions today. Six angels. Angels are messengers of the one true God, Yahweh. They speak only what God tells them to speak. Seven, audible voice. The audible voice is God speaking out to lead a person. This is the voice most people think they want to hear. Eight, nature. God uses nature to please the believer or to show forth his glory. The pure, uncontaminated word of God is the acid test for all the other voices that speak to the believer. It is the acid test to expose false prophets, false teachers, false pastors, false evangelists, false apostles, false teachings, and false doctrines. Specific. Hebrews chapter 4 out of the Amplified Version, begin verse 12. For the word that God speaks is live and powerful and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, the soul, and the immortal spirit. And of the joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging every thought and purpose of the heart. And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight, but all things are open and exposed, naked and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. The condition of the heart, hard heart, calloused heart, shallow heart, bitterness of heart, cluttered heart, good heart, half-hearted heart, pure heart. Proverbs chapter 14, 29 through 30. A patient man has great understanding, but a quick-tempered man displays folly. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Yeah, envy, all kinds of envy, hatred, anger, bitterness. They rot the bones. They rot the inside of you. They cause the sicknesses and diseases. Hallelujah. But a heart at peace Hallelujah, has peace. And when your heart, when you have peace, your body's at peace, that chaos of sickness and disease can't hardly atta can't attach itself to you. 
If it does, it can't stay very long because your piece pushes it out. The condition of the heart is very important in the relationship with the one true God, Yahweh. Very important in the relationship with Jesus Christ. Very important with your relationship with the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh. There are several conditions of the heart that Jesus spoke about in the Gospels. Scripture reading, Matthew chapter 13, verse 11 through 51, Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 20, Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 15, the Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 3 through 31. Mark chapter 4, verse 13, Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then we understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like the seed along the path where the word is sown, as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others like seeds sown along rocky places. Hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others are like seeds sown along among the thorns. Hear the word. But the words of life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others are like seeds sown on good soil. Hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Thirty, sixty, or even a hundred times of what was sown. The condition of the heart is how clearly the condition of the heart determines how clearly the believer hears the voice of the Holy Spirit. The condition of the heart determines how clearly a believer hears the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thus, the condition of the heart determines how obedient the believer is to the Holy Spirit. The different conditions of the heart determine how well the voice of the Holy Spirit is heard by the believer. The condition of the heart determines how obedient the believer is to the Holy Spirit. If you can't hear the Holy Spirit clearly, then you're not going to be 100%. You're not going to be that obedient to the Holy Spirit. That determines how obedient you are to the Holy Spirit. Is how clearly you hear Him. The different conditions of the heart determine how well the voice of the Holy Spirit is heard by the believer. Okay? Your spirit, your heart, how the condition of your heart determines how well you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you. The word heart is translated from several Hebrew words. Two main Hebrew words from which heart is translated. The root word is lev, lamed, that. The word picture for lev is what controls the inside. This is a very good picture of the work of the heart. The main Greek word translated as heart is cardia. It means heart or inner self. Reading is in Psalms 51. Psalms 51 is a very important psalm to read. Scripture reading, Psalms 51. Psalm 51, verses 1 and 2. For the director of music, a psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to David after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Psalm 51, verse 10 through 15. Create me a pure heart, O God, and renew steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth to declare your praise. Hurting of the heart is not something that happens instantly. There are those who are taught to have a hard heart toward the things of the one true God, Yahweh. Hard heart toward hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit followed him. 
It takes time for a person's heart to become hardened to the place where they reject Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, fully and turn to stone. Scripture reading, Psalms 10. Psalms 10, verses 4 and 5. In his pride, the wicked does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there's no room for God. His ways are always prosperous. He is haughty. All your laws are far from him. He sneers at all of his enemies. When a believer's heart begins to become hardened in an area, the Holy Spirit voice is turned down and ignored. When a believer's heart begins to harden in an area, the Holy Spirit's voice is turned down and ignored. This is a sin of disobedience. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 4. Haunty eyes and a proud heart. The lamp of the wicked are sin. Root of bitterness. A root of bitterness is detrimental to a person's heart. Holding grudges is the biggest thing that leads to the big to the root of bitterness. To the root of bitterness. This is the result of holding grudges. Holding grudges is contrary to walking with the Holy Spirit. A grudge will grow into a root of bitterness and destruction. Leviticus chapter 19, verses 17 and 18. Do not hate your brothers in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly so you will not share in his guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a drudge against any one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Root of bitterness destroys whatever it touches. T.L. Osborne said it very well. Hate does not hurt the one hated. It hurts the one hating. The root of bitterness destroys whatever it touches. <clears throat> the root of bitterness, man, destroys whatever it touches. You know people who are very bitter? They, everything around them gets destroyed in one way or another. How do they destroy it? Maybe not physically, but they destroy people emotionally. Because the root of bitterness will destroy most people emotionally, and then it'll destroy them physically. <clears throat> it destroys whatever it touches. The root of bitterness does. Don't make a bit of difference what it is. Hallelujah. Now, T.L. Osborne said it very well. He said that hate does not hurt. The person hated, it hurts the one hating. Think about that. That person you're trying to, that person you're hating isn't feeling the effect of it. And what it's doing, that hate is controlling your life. So if that hate is controlling your life, then that person you're hating is controlling your life. The root of bitterness hinders or even stops the believer or even ministers from flowing in the anointing and or receiving the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The, root, the seat of the root of bitterness is hate. Bitterness and hate go together as one. The root of bitterness hinders and or even stops the believer, including ministers, from flowing in the anointing and or receiving the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the seed of the root of bitterness 
is hate and bitterness and hate go together as one. The Hebrew word for hate is a strong word. The word picture is even stronger. The Hebrew word for hate is shame. Same. is same. The word picture is to devour life strongly. The action of hate where they devour. The action of hate where they devour. The action of hate devours that person hating. It don't devour the person hated. It devours the one who hates. A person full of hate contaminates everyone with hate and destruction. Because when you talk to a person who hates, you hear them talk about another person or something or somebody else, you will hear or you hear coming out of their mouth is how they hate that person. And when, they, when you hear that, that goes in your ear and it affects you. To a certain extent, you have to learn how to reject that. So you don't become contaminated by hate. Now, anger, strength, the strength of anger comes from not recognizing it as an emotion to be con controlled by a person of anger. Okay. Anger strength comes from not recognizing it as an emotion to be controlled by the person of anger. All humans have the emotion anger. How anger is dealt with by a person with the anger defines that person. When anger is allowed its way, it becomes a rage. And rage, when it is not controlled, becomes a spirit. And one Hebrew word translated as anger is vaya, simply means the opposite of love. The other Hebrew word, kwesef, for wrath, simply put, a person is hooked and controlled by anger. You've got to recognize that anger is a natural human emotion. And you have to control it. It's not to control you. You have to control that anger. So how you deal with that anger defines you. When anger is allowed its way, it becomes a rage. And when rage is allowed to have control, it becomes a spirit. And when it becomes a spirit, that means demons can come in and start controlling. When anger is loud its way and it becomes rage, then the enemy has a right to come in and occupy the place where that anger is. One of the Hebrew words for anger, vaye, simply means the opposite of love. We think about it. Is it anger the opposite of love? Think about it. Anger is the opposite of love. Hate is the opposite of love, isn't it? All right. Another Hebrew word for anger is kozef. It's for wrath. It's simply put, a person can become hooked and controlled by the anger. A person controlled by the anger, they are hooked by it. Always think about, I like, I love fishing. I always think about that fish being hooked. You get that fish hooked on there and you got to bring them in, reel it in. So that's what anger does. You get hooked by the anger, by the wrath, and the wrath starts reeling you in to the, their control. That's what happens. Now it's reading, scripture reading is in Psalms chapter 4, Psalms 37, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Scripture reading, Psalms 4, Psalms 37, 1 through 17, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. Psalms 37, verses 7 through 9. Be still before the Lord 
Wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil, for evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Hate is the seed of anger. Hate is a seed of anger. Anger not dealt with festers hate, festers into hate. Seed of hate is anger. And anger not dealt with festers into hatred. Then it grows into bitterness of heart, which destroys everything around them it touches. Hatred and anger and bitterness, all three work together and they feed off of each other. Once you get all three of them going, man, they feed off each other and they and you just keep and it keeps getting worse and worse and worse because you're not controlling it. You're not taking authority and dominion over that anger and making it obedient to you and do what God said what it says in God's word. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Because when you do that, you give devil a foothold. That's what we're talking about here. Hate, anger, and bitterness can take over a person's spirit. Demons come in to take control of that person who does not affect control over anger, hatred, and bitterness. Demons come in and take over control. They start controlling you instead of you controlling yourself. Ah, you might be thinking that you're controlling yourself, but actually you're not. The demons are saying they're clicking the buttons. They're clicking the buttons and making you think that you're doing it yourself, but it's not. It's them doing it. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 through 28. Each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Bitterness hinders the revelation given by the Holy Spirit in all areas of a believer's life. The root of bitterness is pride. Pride is the embodiment of selfishness. Selfishness is saying that self has all priority over everything, even the Holy Spirit. The seed for bitterness is hate. Hate is the embodiment of pride and anger. It is the door of to all kinds of evilness. The seat of bitterness is hate. Hatred is the embodiment of pride and anger and the doorway to all kinds of evil. So why hate? I know some people, they have gotten bitter, hurt at a church, hurt in Something somebody said or something somebody did or didn't do. Church hurt. A lot of people become anger and bitter over church hurt and won't receive from God the things that God wants. Hallelujah. I've seen it time and time and time again. And it bothers me, upsets me. 
inside they get upset because the Holy Spirit that that grieves the Holy Spirit when you are bitter and you're holding a grudge against something that happened in church no matter how bad it was or what it was if you're holding a grudge against it and not forgiving people then you are seeding a root of bitterness which is destructive in your life and God hates it hallelujah because you're working off of pride Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 pride goes before destruction and haughty spirit before a fall Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 pride goes before destruction a haughty spirit before a fall James chapter 3 verses 13 through 16 who has wise and understanding among you let him show it by his good life by the deeds done in humility that come from wisdom but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Yeah, God can't work. God can work. Ooh, glory to God. It says... If you hate, if you harbor bitterness and selfish ambition in your heart, don't deny the truth. Because it is unspiritual, it is of the devil. For where there's envy and selfish ambition, there you have every sort of disorder and every evil practice. Hallelujah. When you are harboring bitterness and hatred toward something that happened somebody or toward a church that because something they didn't do something or something happened or whatever, whatever it is that caused that that church hurt, you are doing the work of the enemy. You allowed him to work through you and fester that. Hallelujah. You need to go back and make things right between you and them people, you and that church, you and that person, you and that pastor, or whoever it was. Make it right. Hallelujah. Because the one hating is creating destruction in your life. You are creating destruction in your life. The body reacts negatively to all hatred and bitterness. The mind, the emotion, and will are distorted by anger. Your mind, your will, and, your st and emotions are distorted by anger. Your mind, will, and emotions are distorted by hatred. Your mind, will, and emotions are distorted by bitterness. All three of them work to destroy you. Because when, you have, when you're harboring anger, and bitterness and hatred you are you can't think <clears throat> they control how you think and what you think about and how you think about it and that's not of God period destruction does not just stop with you because you hate it continues on to other things in your life Destruction will continue in the one hating until it destroys everything around you. Destruction continues until the one hating has destroyed. Until the one hating is destroyed. It destroys you and destroys everything around you. That's what hate does. The root of bitterness allows Satan to destroy your life and his cohorts a doorway and to have a foothold in an area of anger and or bitterness and or hatred. Once the foothold is established, then the person hated has control 
in the life of the one heeding. Listen to that again. Once a foothold is established, then the person heeded has control in the life of the one heeding. If you're hating somebody, that hate, that person has control of your life because you won't do certain things because that person's around or you won't do certain things because that person's there. You won't go to this place or that place. People won't go to certain churches because they hate somebody. And they don't even... Because that person, that person goes, that I hate that person. They go to that church, so I'm not going there because I hate them. Man, if that's your attitude, you need to get it right with God and get rid of that hatred and bitterness because you're destroying yourself. The enemy has a foothold in your life and he's controlling you and you're not be able to receive from God until you set it free from that. So you get set free from that. And sometimes you have to have somebody lay hands on you and pray for you to get you set free. But a lot of times when you first recognize it, if you recognize it, a lot of times you can get yourself set free if you do the things in the correct way in order and fashion to get free. The enemy takes a foothold and builds on it until he has possession of the one hating so if the enemy has possession of you, you need to go further than that. The Hebrew, there are six Hebrew words for bitterness that are associated with bitterness. The Hebrew word mar, the word picture for mar is a man of chaos. Hebrew word picture for mara is another word associated with bitterness. It means disobey, or bitter. The word picture of Mara means what comes out of bitterness. What does come out of bitterness? There's nothing good that comes out of bitterness. You being bitter towards somebody or something, there's nothing good that come from it. It's controlling you. Another Hebrew word for donkey, Hamor. The word picture for Hamor is Angry man. Anger and bitter. Or anger and bitter. Hallelujah. Now this is interesting. Here's some more. The word picture for rebellion is Marta. Marad, excuse me. Marad. The word picture of Marad is the door of the bitter. Wow. The Hebrew word for trim, prune, or sing is Zamar. The word picture of Zamar is to cut off the bitterness. Wow. Bitter or rebel. The word picture for keep is guard, Shamar. The word picture for Shamar is destroy the devil or destroy the bitter. Ooh, glory to God. Zamar, to cut off bitterness or cut off the rebellion. Word picture for keep, guard is shamar, is to destroy, rebel, destroy the rebel. Who's the rebel? The enemy, devil. He's the rebel. And when you harbor bitterness and anger and so forth, then you become part of that rebellion that the enemy has against God, your God, the Lord God. And against Jesus Christ, your Savior. Hallelujah. Now let's read in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 through 16. Make every Reading from Hebrews chapter 12. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Bitter root grows to cause trouble or defile. Oh, wow! Look what I said here in verse 6. 
last part of 15 there. That no root, no bitter root grows to cause trouble or defile. That no bitter root grows to cause trouble or defile. See, bitterness, the root of bitterness causes trouble. The root of bitterness defiles you. It don't defile that person who you hate, don't who you have bitterness toward. It defiles you. You're the one that gets defiled. You're the one that's affected by it. That's the reason God hates pride, hates bitterness, and rage. Anger is part of our emotion. God gets angry. So we have to learn how to control that anger so it doesn't become controlling us. We have to control that anger. Anger does not have to, cannot control us. Because when anger starts controlling us, it becomes a rage. When a rage starts controlling us more, then the more the rage controls, then it becomes bitterness. Anger and bitterness work together. Hatred, they all work together to destroy God's people. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Remember, the Word of God is always the acid test for all voices that speak to the believer. The pure, uncontaminated Word of God is the acid test for all the other voices that speak to the believer. It is the acid test to expose false prophets, false teachers, false pastors, false evangelists, false apostles, false teachings, and false doctrines. Specific. Hebrews, chapter 4, out of the Amplified Version, begin verse 12. For the word that God speaks is live and powerful and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, the soul, and the immortal spirit. And of the joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging every thought and purpose of the heart. And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight, but all things are open and exposed, naked and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Whenever the Holy Spirit does not confirm or vindicate a teaching or what is spoken, the believer should put it on the shelf and leave it there until the Holy Spirit has revealed it or has vindicated it. A teaching or what is spoken should not be used until the Holy Spirit has vindicated it or has revealed it, even if it looks right or sounds right. All books available by Thomas Crosswalker Moore are at Amazon.com. The HTTPS address below is for the web address of the author page at Amazon.com. Also, the books can be viewed and checked out at my web page at CrosswalkerTBM.com.
Here are a few slides from my walks from 1981 through 2012. And a total of 17 crusades. Contact information. You can contact me through crosswalkertbm at gmail.com. Please reference the title of the video at the beginning of the message. My web address is crosswalkertbm.com. More information about lessons, books, CDs, DVDs, and even my um, YouTube page. Uh, you can check out Facebook at Thomas Crosswalker Bud Moore. My author page at Amazon.com Amazon is listed below. So, may the Lord bless and keep you all.